and welcome to 360 Gamercast, episode 191 for, oh, what day shall this go out? Saturday, the 30th of December, 2023. I'm your host, Mark Webb, Gamma Tag, Pearson of East Steam ID, Webby 360G, and joining me today is... Uh, Sensei Switch. Hello, and happy Christmas and a happy new year to everybody. Now, Monica or whatever else people might be celebrating. Yeah, if you aren't a member of the Discord, then you won't know. So we were meant to do a show last week uh, by the dreaded man flu. I was fucking dog sick, so we didn't record. Um, I've only just started to feel better now, so we're actually recording on the 29th of December. So this is to make up for last week's episode. And then our next one that we do in January, <coughs> excuse me, um, is going to be our Game of the Year show. So we're looking at recording that hopefully on the 7th or the 8th of January. We haven't decided on availabilities yet, but around that, that sort of time, hopefully. So... That'll be our top five games that we've played in 2023. Obviously, we've not played everything. Or just be your personal preferences. Also, we'll uh, we'll all read out as many people's as I can who've put their top fives in the Discord. So in Discord, in the forum section, there's a game of the year section. It's been quite busy the last couple of weeks because I opened up that forum a few weeks ago. Quite a lot of people have put their top fives in there already but if you haven't drop into the discord and do it and i'll read them out and then I'm gonna collate them all and give a rundown of the total community top five which will be quite interesting a little bit of a spoiler harry potter is very high up in the community game of the years it was, I think, uh, one of the um, biggest released games last year, wasn't it? And also, um, wasn't it the highest viewings on Twitch as well throughout the year for a game? Yeah, so hopefully, yeah, the Game of the Year show, hopefully next week we'll record it and then um, go from there, mate. So hopefully we'll have everyone on. Nick's been very quiet, so I'm hoping he's okay. <clears throat> Probably full of festive spirit or something. Well, I know he had the man flu as well, the same time as me from oh, his God. messages, so. Yes. Okay, so. Should we talk about the games we've been playing over this festive period? Might as well. Okay, cool. So. Um, I don't know where to start, really. So, I did have... Oh, well, I've had quite a bit of fun on Modern Warfare 3, Darren. So, uh, Warzone with Peebs and Colin over the festive period, so that's been really, really good. Um, the new Warzone map is launched now. I wasn't sure if it had launched the last time that we recorded. I think it might have done, but I hadn't played it I yet. I think a so, few things have come out since we last recorded, because I was just sitting there thinking, like, oh, yeah, I don't think we talked about that last yeah, time I was on. But. yeah. So obviously the new map I'd played, the, the new big map in Zombies anyway, so it's basically that Zombies map is now in the big rotation anyway. Um, it's quite good, but with Peebs and Colin, we mostly do the smaller maps, the Resurgence maps. So, um, you know, the, 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 the big map's been a little bit of a moot point, to be honest, because we just do the small maps. So, And they haven't changed. It's still the old school ones, which is fine. Uh, really enjoying it. Uh, it was just really good to get on with Colin and Peebs again because I don't really get on with them a lot these days because they're normally on during the day. Whereas I'm, mm. you know, got got my kids in the day on the weekend, etc. And then obviously the evenings, obviously Colin's at work or whatever, and Peebs is with his missus. But I've had a few good sessions. Um, had a lot of fun on Modern Warfare. Not really played any of the multiplayer though for some reason. I just, uh, just haven't had the time. But, um, yeah, it's still good fun playing some Modern Warfare 3. Um, not really sure what else I can say about it, really. It's just um, it's still a decent game. It's been on sale over Christmas as well, the the single player and the normal multiplayer portion of Modern Warfare 3. So 
Um, I think a few more people have picked it up, which has been, I think Bolo picked it up. Sly hasn't yet, but I managed to jump on as well on Warzone with Sly and Bolo as well, uh, right. which was quite good. So, yes, yeah, there's been quite a few people on it, which has been really, really interesting. So, um, yeah, I've had a good time on it, to be honest. It's one of those community games. Well, it was one of those games in the community that quite a lot of people have got. So, yeah, been enjoying playing some Modern Warfare 3. So um, I highly recommend people pick it up for the mar- mar- for the multiplayer Single player, I've only done the first couple of missions and just couldn't be asked to get back into it, to be honest. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it, really. That's Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, short and sweet. Oh, well, it's my turn, I take it. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Um, I know you'll be able to chip in on one of these. Um, I can't remember if we talked about it before on an earlier one, but um, Fortnite is basically now like about four or five different games. Uh, yeah, that's right, they've, yeah. Yeah, they've basically added like a racing game to it over their sort of like weird partnership with, um, is it Rocket League? Yes. They bought out um, Harmonix creators of rock band and there's Indeed. now a rock band mode in the game uh, yep. complete with like different songs you can buy like instrument glamours and stuff you can have etc um and they also teamed up with lego to basically do like a weird sort of like it's hard to explain is is, is it minecraft or is it more like a survival game um it's a bit like minecraft yeah, so um, basically there's a few modes. There, There is a creative mode, but me and my boy have been playing the survival mode on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. And it's pretty uh, much is, is um, it's just basically like the survival mode of Minecraft. So basically you start off, you've got to gather your resources, build a little forge to make weapons and like an axe and uh like a spade and like a pickaxe and then you can mine things and build better equipment and buildings and stuff like that yeah uh, there is like a structure to it isn't there yeah. like all the different bits and bobs and uh your settlement can get visited by random fortnite characters etc that will ask to stay and <clears throat> team up with you you can take them out on missions etc yeah go exploring uh you just have to provide them with a bed at the home base and pickaxes and weapons and all that kind of stuff if you want them to use them yeah, but out of I mean I haven't played the racing one because all that's there is ranked and I've got yeah. no interest in that kind of bullshit. Um, but the other two I think are, are good fun. Yeah. Um, and no doubt Lego will probably gonna make a hell of a lot of money out of selling Fortnite themed Lego figures. Yeah. To sort of tie in with it. Yeah, I'd say so. so. All of your um. Yeah, pretty much all of your skins and most of the stuff you have from the actual game, emotes, all that sort of stuff, translates over into, like, Lego form. Yes, it yeah, does. It looks really, really cool. Weird. It looks pretty yeah, cool. It, it, yeah, it is made really well. Um, the, the emotes are amusing as well. Yeah. Because they're done in, like, a weird jerky Lego style. Yeah. You don't obviously get all the full movement and everything, but, yeah, really good job. Uh, for that, but yeah, so you've got obviously a battle royale mode now. The the main game which started it all, which is the they call Save the World, even though it was just Fortnite. Um, and then those extra three sort of game modes now added to it as well. Yeah, I'd say the the Lego mode's a good idea um, because the way you build your structures is like it gives you like a blueprint and then you put all the little lego pieces in into it for like the buildings which is really really cool and it makes that satisfying noise that clicking noise yeah yeah the clicking noise of all the pieces being assembled and put in i will say though i think (coughs) the survival mode is quite difficult um like so you can make swords and crossbows and shit like that but you get some big bosses just in the world and We've been defeated many times, and the annoying thing is, is you respawn back at your bed, but with nothing, and then you have to go back to where you died to pick up your backpack. 
So if you've travelled quite far, it's a bit of a trek to go back and get your backpack. Getting kids ready for Dark Souls. Yeah, it it is pretty pretty, pretty (laughs) much, yeah. It's very nice to go all the way back here, pick up my drop stuff. Uh, Isn't it like that in Minecraft, though, as well, maybe? uh, It's been a long time. Maybe, I think so. I don't know. I've never played the really played the survival mode of Minecraft because I normally just dick around just on the building mode. Bro, yeah. Because you just don't want to be hassled, do you, while you're yeah. building all of these weird phallic buildings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah, I think <laughs> that Fortnite Lego mode's really good. And for it to be free as well, I think that's pretty cool, to be honest. I mean, yeah, myself and Marcus have played it for quite a few hours now. We've got quite a good little base going, and we go off in little adventures and and stuff. It's pretty good. So, yeah, I've been enjoying it. That um, Guitar Hero type mode, though, Dan, have you tried that? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting. It took me a while to get used to the buttons because it has... Yeah, like... the placement. It's left and right on the D-pad yeah. and X and B on the um, the buttons for yeah. the four different notes, and it is confusing. Yeah. Uh, I was playing it with Mella uh, oh, at yeah. one point because uh, we were doing, like, duos and stuff. And, yeah. um we was like, yeah, can we change the buttons? And we changed the buttons. Uh, and he was like, yeah, these would be much better. And then I think it was like 30 to 40 seconds into one of the songs. We was both like, this is a really bad idea. Like, as crap as those buttons were, I'm, I was kind of used to them. Mm-hmm. Even though they still used to catch me out. It's the X and the X and the right on the thumbstick yeah. the, on the deep pad are the ones that confuse me the most. Yeah. Like, you just occasionally push the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm the same like that because it's like it's just weird getting used to that left and right and X and B, and just where it is in your brain. Like, yeah. I, I was playing it and I said to the missus, "Said, oh, I kind of wish I'd never got rid of my Guitar Hero and Rock Band stuff now." Well, they are apparently going to do an update that and that allows people to use their old guitars and stuff, plug them in and use them. Oh, that's so cool! I don't even have mine anymore. No. I mean, little did we know when they were doing the uh, like the the finale event for their last season, which basically had your character, yeah, floating through in different forms through the different worlds. You went into the racing world, the Lego world, and the rock band world when like at the Eminem concert thing. Yeah. Um, little did we know they were going to be added as full, full done game modes by the end of it, the start of the next season. Yeah. That's pretty and cool. And there was, I think at one point, I think when I logged in very early on, there was around three and a half to four something million people playing that Lego at once. Wow. Because it tells you when you're on the, the menus like yeah. how many people are in each game mode, and that had a ridiculous amount of people. And there were even top streamers and stuff, people playing it. Yeah. Like people who usually play stuff like Warzone and whatnot, they were all trying it and checking it out. I mean, it's nice, easy, wholesome content. I mean, there you go. If you want to make wholesome content games, it's things like that. You don't have to uh, dumb down games that are a certain way to try and make them more wholesome. Yeah. They already exist. So, yeah, that's those. Um, just been like mucking about on them every now and again. There's also like a weird jam session mode. I don't know if you've ever done that. So as you play through, you'll unlock songs or some of the songs you own for lobby music will translate to um, what do you might call it? The actual like rock band mode, main stage. I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah, main stage. So there's main stage which is the, the traditional rock band mode. And there, there is another one called Jam Session, Main Stage Jam Session. Oh, no, Fortnite Festival Jam Stage, sorry. Where you can go there and set different tracks to your emotes. And when you literally do an emote, it will play a part of the song. But okay. it will be an isolated part of the song, depending on what instrument you're playing. And okay. you can have three other people near you playing different parts of different songs with different instruments together to make up like a weird 
song. And you can change the pitch, the tempo, and all that kind of stuff as well. It's kind of weird. It's it's an easy way of earning sort of like um, Fortnite levels and stuff because you can pretty much just set yourself there and go AFK, AFK for half an hour and get a load of dailies done in it. Oh, so right. Daily side quests for it. And it has its own battle pass as well. Nice. So you can unlock other music. So it's, there's actually kind of quite, just like um, Rock Band, there is actually quite a different sort of amount of bands and stuff that are in it. Yeah. It's like mainly it's like the weekend themed. But you've got like the White Stripes, Imagine Dragons, Weezer. Yeah. It's Lady got some quite Gone, good tracks, yeah. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, etc. They're still adding cranberries. I imagine they'll just keep updating it and adding it over time. Yeah, because it's not a huge set list, though, is it, really? Not at the moment. I mean, it started out with, like, five songs, and now there's, like, about 20-odd, but I think only certain ones are selectable at a time, and they rotate them. I think if you obviously want to play them whenever you want, you can purchase them. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. They're like yeah. five. They're like five hundred V bucks each, which yeah. is not too bad. Actually, I don't know. Let's see what the actual rough translation to that is, because you can usually tell because of the uh, what's it? So it's about three pounds fifty, I'd say. Yeah, about three pounds fifty a song. Roughly no, that's what not they too are. bad. Yeah. Nice. And then you play them at your leisure. <coughs> cool. Yeah, moving on. Okay, yeah, let's move on then. So um the Steam Deck has been a lifesaver for me over Christmas. Um obviously I don't want to be sitting or, sitting in my man cave. So uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, Darren, but I find um because I work from home and I'm in my man cave all day for work. Um, I kind of, when I'm not working, I don't want to be in here. You know what I mean? Because it just feels like a work zone and I'm sitting. In yeah, I know what you day. mean. Yeah. So obviously I've had a week off and I don't, I haven't had a lot of time off this year. So it's been my first full week off all year. So I've not really wanted to be in my work area, if that makes sense. So, you know, I've been either well spending, or well, obviously I've been spending a lot of time with the family, which has been great. Uh, spending time with the kids, going out for walks and shit like that. But if they're, you know, when we're just chilling at home, I want to be around them. I don't want to be hiding upstairs, playing games and shit like that. So, um, well, they're watching their crappy kiddie cartoons or Christmas movies or whatever. I've been uh, playing on the Steam Deck on the sofa. Nice. Which has been really good. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. I um, just want to give a big shout out to Sly uh, for the recommendation on this. So there's an app uh, which came out on Steam. It's about four quid called XB Play. And um, basically you install that on your Steam Deck and it allows you to stream your Xbox console to your Steam Deck. Also allows you to do your cloud streaming as well, um, but I've been using it just for streaming my console to my Steam Deck because I always found the X Cloud itself to not be great. That reliable, yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically, it's basically just it links up to your Xbox, and then you can just you know, do your dashboard on your Xbox and it's basically just having your Xbox on your handheld and it's been really good. So I've been playing a lot of Forza on my Steam Deck because it's just quite a chilled out game, if that makes sense, because it's not hardcore, you know, it's made for the controller and it works really well. Not like no input lag or anything that that I can really tell. 
Um, I mean, luckily, I, you know, I have my Xbox hardwired um, to my router. Um, and then obviously I just have the Wi-Fi to my Steam Deck and it's all in the same room anyway. So it's been pretty flawless, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Forza just on the Steam Deck, just chilling out, playing that. So that's been really, really good. Um, been been enjoying get, getting back into that again because, you know, <coughs> I've not had the great Forza hasn't had the greatest experience on PC. Um, it works great on Xbox, and obviously just streaming it to the Steam Deck's fine. So so that's been really really good. So uh, a good shout out to Sly again for that, which, which has been really really good. Um, but the main I've been the like so I've got two main games I'm currently playing on the Steam Deck. So I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, uh, uh, but uh, one of them is Grand Theft Auto Four. Right now, Grand Theft Auto Five does run on the Steam Deck, but I've completed that like three times, so I can I don't want to play it again. But it's been years since playing Grand Theft Auto Four on the old Xbox 360. So uh, I've been playing that again. And, mate, it is really good. It still holds up pretty damn well. Obviously, it's on a, it's not on a telly, right? So it's on a smaller screen, so it still looks okay. But it's just got a really good story, I think. And just the city itself is, is, is just really well done. Um, you know, and it's just really, really... It's, it is one of the better ones, I think, for story, I think. Um, so I've been really enjoying playing through Grand Theft Auto 4. I've not finished it yet, but I'm definitely getting about halfway through the game. Uh, but also with the Steam version, um, the DLCs are included as well. So the Ballad of Gay Tony and the Lost and the Damned. So, did you, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Did you hear about the, uh, information from rockstar that they did actually plan to do story dlc for go for GTA 5. 5, but they, they scrapped it for the gta online i'm not surprised too much money yeah yeah it doesn't surprise me what we all thought basically yeah. yeah no it's not it's not surprising at all mate to be honest um but yeah, Grand Theft Auto 4 is really, really good. i uh, really enjoying it. I know it's an old game, but it's just um, sometimes it's quite nice to go back to old games that are really good and you've forgotten the story because obviously it's been that many years. So, so yeah, I've been really enjoying that. And the other game that I've been really enjoying, only really the last four or five days, and I'm really hooked on it, uh, is War Thunder. Now, War Thunder's been out for years. I think about 10 years now. Decade at least, yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's also available on consoles. Yeah, it came out August 2013. I thought it was 10 years old. Um, but I I mean, I played it ages ago on PC and I just was like, mm, couldn't be bothered, but... I had I had a little thing for World of Tanks earlier on in the year, and I kind of fell off it a little bit, uh, and then stopped playing that. But I, I go through these phases where I really want to play some World War Two games, uh, and I think what's really kicked off for me is I've on Netflix. There's a new World War Two documentary series. Yeah, I saw it yesterday when I was down my mate's net. Uh, when we were skipping through Netflix, and I did mention to him, I was like, "Oh, that's the World War Two thing that I think's just come out that people have raved about." Yeah, it, it, it's pretty decent. I, I watched the whole thing, and it's all proper footage taken from World War Two, but colorized and made widescreen. So I've done a really good job of making the footage look better. Um, and I love all my World War Two history stuff, so. Um, it really got me thinking, oh, I want to play something <coughs> vaguely World, World War II. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, War Thunder. I've not played that for ages. And the cool thing about War Thunder is uh, it works really well on the Steam Deck. 
which is fantastic because on PC, um, I mean, I've also been playing it on my PC since then, not on the Steam Deck and using my mouse and keyboard to do the thing, but it translates really well to a controller. So, um, so War Fund is basically you can do air battles, tank battles, or ship battles, uh, which is basically like World of Tanks, World of Warplanes, and World of Warships, but all in one game. And in my opinion, slightly better. Now, uh, it is a bit grindy, unless you want to buy stuff, but I'm a tight ass, so I don't buy things. So I've been playing it a lot um, over the last four or four or five days, and I've unlocked quite a lot of vehicles. Um, I've unlocked the Spitfires now. Uh, which is really, really good. But you can, so so basically you choose a country and you can change them at any time and then you just work through the vehicles and unlocks for that country, which is pretty good. Uh, and it's just, it's not hardcore. It's very, you know, the games only last about 10 or 15 minutes each. But it's just quite, you know, you know what you're doing, you're going in and you've got to like take objectives if you're on the planes or uh, like if you can be a bomber and bomb some bases or whatever, or be like the fight fighter planes and protect your bombers and take out the other people. And the the um, tank mode is pretty much a carbon copy of World of Tanks, so so that's fine. That's easy enough. Um, and then the warships mode is really really cool as well. But I haven't felt like it's unfair like so basically i've played quite a lot of world of tanks on pc so i went through this world of tanks phase but it was world of tanks blitz which is kind of like the mobile version where the games are short right. short and sweet and it's easier whereas the full world of tanks game it's very pay to win because like I'd go into battles and you'd be t- taken out from miles away and you'd be like, what the fuck? You know, whereas this war thunder feels a little bit more fair. I haven't felt like I've just been absolutely obliterated just out of nowhere on many occasions, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying it, man. I really, really am. Um, it's just a fun little game and I can split it between the Steam Deck and the PC um, and just play it, have a, like a, a couple of games and turn it off if I feel like it, you know what I mean? So, um, and, and you know, and I'm just really impressed at how well it runs on the Steam Deck as well because it just feels like a really good way to play it. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying that, man. Um, I will say that the... Uh, Steam Deck itself has been the best purchase I've made in 2023. Uh, I was I was on the fence with it um, for ages because I was thinking, oh, I never play handhelds, you know, like I've got my Switch, never play it, um, you know, and I just never really play handhelds because I'd rather play on a big screen. But because I've got such a, a big Steam library anyway, it just... It just translates really well, and I just find myself just chilling out on the sofa and just playing it a lot. Um, so, so that's all good. Even though I'm probably going to replace the screen at some point because I dropped it the other week. Oh, so so the good thing about the Steam Deck, it comes with a case, and the case is really good. But it's one of them ones that zips all the way around, and basically I was playing it in the car. And I forgot to zip it up. I didn't realise I hadn't zipped it up. So I picked it up by the handle and it just flung out onto my stone driveway and scratched the screen a little bit. I'd be screwing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not super no noticeable, but I know it's there, if you know what I mean. So I will probably do it. Uh, you can get a new screen if I fix it for 100 quid with with the tools. So I might That's do it. It's cheaper than a mobile phone, which is ridiculous. Yeah, so I might do it at some point. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not super bad, so I'm just kind of living with it at the minute. So, yeah, man. Oh, and the other game. Sorry, I'm I'm hogging all the time here. Um, that uh, we played a lot of on Christmas Day and Boxing Day. All of us... Um, 
me, Marcus, Leon, and her son and his wife, we all played Among Us. So they were all playing on their phones and I was playing it on the Steam Deck. And we would and we opened a public room and we had a full fifteen people and we were all playing Among Us for hours and it was hilarious. Such a good game, yeah. man. I love that game. <laughs> <coughs> so I think yeah. they've actually just recently done a sort of Among Us tie in with Vampire Survivors. Oh, have they? Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So what have they done? Like, I'm not entirely put, put, too put, uh... sure how that I know I've just haven't had a look, but oh, okay. I did notice they tweeted out about it a little while ago. Oh, interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah, so those have kind of been my Steam Deck games, and it's been uh, a good time, mate, playing playing them, to be honest. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Back, back to you, mate. Uh, I'll just briefly talk about um, a demo that I played. I think it was like just before Christmas. But I think it's out on every, pretty much everything now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the the Tekken Eight demo. Okay. So you get like four playable characters, um, and sort of like I think it's a bit of the story mode, which I didn't really particularly want to ruin training mode versus all that kind of sort of stuff but it sort of gives you an idea of sort of how it's going to be and i'm kind of quite impressed of it so far to be honest it still plays exactly like a tekken game yeah um so it still doesn't feel as smooth as like a 2d fighter does um because it's a 3d game yeah but visually, it's it seems like a huge markup from the previous one. That's good. Um, so there's sort of like you can see that they've finally sort of moved into another thing because I think there was information that the the last Tekken they did and maybe I think the last Soul Calibur as well were basically still using the same engine under the hood that they were using on the the 360 PS3 era. Okay. Even though they were like PS4, etc. So yeah. yeah, that's one of the early games coming out next year, isn't it? Yeah. It's like out towards the end of the month. Nice. You got like two or three there, but yeah, that demo is now available on all platforms, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. I have to check Apart it out then. The Switch. Well, I'm not surprised. Well, you. They do like still sticking stuff on the Switch, don't they? But with um, like it being like streamed or something instead. Yeah, but it's so underpowered now, though, isn't it? That's that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, we are. I think it's pretty much a dead cert. We're going to see an announcement for the next one this year. Yeah. It just depends on what it's going to be because it's like you say they are literally just slightly more powerful than a ps3 um or like a 360 and a ps3 aren't they basically yeah so they're kind of like behind in tech by about sort of four or five years they can still put out impressive games that obviously play to the console strengths yeah, but a lot of the games now that are like all like Unreal Engine and ray tracing and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't translate to that system at all. Yeah. No, I agree, mate. I do think because there's always rumours about a Switch Two, isn't there? Coming out. Or yeah, I don't think they're going to call it the Switch Two though, though, because I think they learned a huge lesson from the Wii U. Yeah of people getting confused. So I expect them to just to completely come out with a new name. Yeah. So it doesn't confuse people. Because you can imagine, like, was that the Switch or the Switch 2? But the the most interesting thing that I'm going to find from it is the fact it's it should be backwards compatible. Yeah. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah, like it's actually got to that point, and especially where the systems like a handheld home console hybrid. Yeah. 
Uh, that'd be pretty cool, especially if it actually allows you to play some of the older games, but with like an uptick in performance. Yeah. Considering it was like the the game was there, it was just the hardware playing that data that was holding it back or yeah. causing frame issues, etc. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I managed to uh, completely cripple my back over uh, just before Christmas for a good week mm. or so. Ouch. So I was laid up in bed for a while, so I didn't get a great amount of gaming in. How's your back now? Um, oh, it's, it's fine. It was j literally just before Christmas it kind of got back to normal. But I've been sort of still sort of slightly taking it easy, making sure I don't bend awkwardly and stuff. It's, you just start falling apart when you're past your 40s, as you know. Yeah. you got to be a bit careful. Roll that ailment roulette dice every morning when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, gone gone back to um, Lies of P, getting into oh, that nice. still. On Excellent. chapter nine now, I think nice. it is. I'm not too sure how many chapters the game's got. It's either sort of 10 or 12. Um, but I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. Good. Uh, there's so many like little mechanics and things to muck about with and the idea that you can change your weapons out to create new combinations, etc. Yeah. And all of the different abilities and stuff you can set to your P organ, which basically will give you sort of increased recovery rate, um, charging of certain things like your puppet string. Um, no, Legion arms, aren't they? Yeah, as, as in general. And your Fable Arts, which allows you to do all your different special moves off of each different weapon because there's different ones. It's just love it. And all the locales in the game are so well done as oh, well. Oh, they are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, gorgeous. Uh, yeah. it's, it's always quite funny when, uh, like, I was speaking to someone and he was like, oh, I'll, I'll have fun with the next boss, mate. And <laughs> yes. I'll text them and be like, first time, mate. Did it first time. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so it was like I jumped on Christmas Day um, <coughs> before like my brother was coming on uh, Skype uh, to have a bash because it had been saved for about a week or so before just at a boss just before a boss area kind of thing. Yeah. And I sort of booted it up and I was like, all right, let's see what this boss is like. And it was like it's the first time. Like there you go. <laughs> so. But, yeah, no doubt they're going to start getting uh, a lot more difficult as the game goes on. Either that or I've just been getting lucky, because, you know, you do sometimes just get those lucky runs, don't you? Yeah, you do, yeah. Nice. Mm, back to you again. Back to me. Okay, so... Um, I actually fired up my PS5. I know it's it, it, it is a rare anomaly for me to turn on the PS5, uh, but some new DLC came out for Final Fantasy 16. How have you picked it up? Completed it, mate. <laughs> Fair. It's... I've got it on. I've got the uh, season pass in my like wish list, so when yeah. it goes on sale. Yeah. So this DLC, I can't remember the name of it now. It's just gone from my head. But There's two of them, isn't there? So, yeah, only one's out now. I think the next one's coming yeah. out in, like, June or something silly. So, but this one is not very long. It's only about three hours. Maybe, All right. Yeah. It's only about eight pounds, isn't it, or something? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. So, it's basically... Hmm... I'm not going to spoil it too much. I'm going to say it's basically just one area. There's a new area on the map, and the area is kind of this futuristic tower. It can't. It did remind me a lot of a dungeon raid on Final Fantasy XIV. I've also like the Crystal Tower raid. Kind of, yeah. 
Um, it, I did enjoy it. <coughs> I thought it was really, really fun. Um, it's weird because I know Final Fantasy 16's not been out for ages. But fuck me, I forgot how to play it. It only been a, a <laughs> few, a, like three months or something, and I was like. Uh, how do I play this again? So it took me a little while just to get used to the combat again, to be honest. Um, but oh, I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, I, I haven't really got a bad word to say about it because the, the, the extra story they've added is pretty cool. You play as all the characters. that, that They all join you, if that makes sense. Your brother oh, yeah. and uh, what's her face. And... Um, Jill. Yeah, and you go on this little quest to this tower. And uh yeah, it's really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um I do think Final Fantasy 16 has been slightly underrated this year because it's definitely one of my favourite games I've played this year. And it's not just because I'm a Final Fantasy fanboy, it's because you know it's actually a decent game. It's such a departure from the traditional Final Fantasy game in regards to its combat, especially, um, that it feels kind of like a, like a Devil May Cry type of action fighting game. And well, one of the respect. one of the people who made Devil May Cry was involved. Well, there we go. So, um, yeah, it was just really good to go back to it because it just got the game fresh in my mind again, especially coming up to the Game of the Year show that we're doing next week. Um, I do think that the DLC was good. Um, eight quid, because I bought it separately. You see, I didn't buy the season pass. So, so obviously the second DLC is going to be more expensive than the first one. Yeah, one was like eight pound, one was 12 pounds. So I'm yeah. guessing it's kind of one's going to be a lot more, yeah. feel like more of a sizable chunk than the, the previous one. That's right. Yeah. So I think that's obviously this this was the shorter one. Um, which, which which is fun. So yeah, I really enjoyed it to be honest. So it was a good excuse to dust off the old PS5 and uh, and and slap a disc in. I was like, I actually own a di- that game on the disc and, uh, and 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 play it. So yeah, it was good. So 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 that was cool. And then I played that, and then I resubscribed to PS Plus and played some Gran Turismo Seven online. And downloaded some PS Plus games for the boy, uh, like that Lego racing game, which he's been enjoying a little bit. So, yeah, man, um, back on the PS5 a little bit more again. It's been neglected quite heavily the last few months. So, yeah, it's just nice to find find some time for it, really. But, yeah, Final Fantasy 16 DLC is great. If you haven't played the full game of Final Fantasy 16, what are you doing with your life? Pick it up. It's amazing. Yeah, you can. I think you can get it pretty reasonable in a sale at the moment as well. There's a few sort of boxing sales and stuff going on. I know there's a few people I've seen in the Discord who've said that they're waiting for the PC version, but I don't even know when it's coming out on PC, to be honest. I mean, it's been out... Probably the middle of next year, yeah. I'd say, somewhere around then. Yeah, I wouldn't want to it's wait that long. It's about a year, isn't it? Wait. Yeah. So, if you've got a PS5, pick it up. Back to Darren. Uh, geez, things. I don't really think there's a great deal else. Or if, oh, yeah, there is actually one other thing. Um, Diablo 4. Yes. I have been playing that because they have a Christmas event going on at the moment. They do indeed. Um, And it's the only place pretty much in the game where you can consistently get reasonable loot to gear your character up. Ah. Uh, Even though 99% of the time you are still getting complete and utter shit, like from the drops. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I've, I've been doing that. Um, kind of annoyed at the way they've done this event, to be honest. Not in the way they executed it, but in the way the rewards work. So, as you know, from doing the um, Battle Pass stuff for the, yeah. the season itself, 
you basically unlock cosmetics, and those cosmetics unlock across all classes. Yeah. Whereas the cosmetics from this are class-specific, and you have to buy each and every single one for every single fucking class. Yeah. Uh, and also, when you're in the main game, and you pick up, say, a weapon that's not for your class, and you take it to the blacksmith and they junk it, it unlocks the transmog for, for that thing. Yeah. In this, you literally have to use the character specifically for those things to actually unlock the transmog. Ugh. So if you've got, say, the backpack trophy for another class or a weapon skin for another class, you physically need to put that in the uh, item box or whatever for your stash create a new character on that server for that class and then go into the game, take it out and use it to fucking... Oh, Who buddy. comes up yeah. with this shite? It's just to get people Who, playing it more, I, I guess, and different it, classes. But they're not playing it more. They're just literally creating a character to just unlock a cons cosmetic on it. I oh, know. Sad, isn't it? Like, we... It's it, like my mate... Like, I, I, I literally sit there and talk to him about so many other bits and bobs. But you get so many games programmers and fucking people that just give it their <laughs> excuses. And you'll get some 20-year-old modder that's like, solve that in an afternoon, mate. Yeah. And it, this, this doesn't just happen every now and again. It's constantly. Yeah. Constantly. Who are the fucking people they hire for this shit? I, know, I don't get it. I really don't get it when, like, there's just no real reason for so much crap in games these days that just doesn't make sense. I'm oh, sorry, I had to get that off my chest. That's fair, mate. It's fucking annoying. Absolutely annoying. And they'll be like, oh, we'll sort that out next season. Yeah. Because they obviously can't be bothered to do it this season. But it meant that I've been having to grind out all this shit it. And like, fair enough. I'm I'm leveling and getting gear and stuff. And I've finally, bar one item, got pretty much most of the stuff I was after for my character. Yeah. But again, even with I will say like Diablo, where they were like, oh, we speeded up the leveling up system, and it's like I dread to fucking think what it was before. I I oh, really no. do because it takes so long to level up those last lot of levels. Yeah. I think I'm at about level 97, and you're talking almost like three quarters of an hour per bar. Yeah. So it's like almost two to three hours to go up one level. It's like, really? What the hell? Um, and one other thing I will briefly say is I started going to some of those world boss things. Yeah. Uh, because that's the only one of the only places I can pretty much work out where they will drop like the highest number tiered gear, so you get like 925 drops power level. Yeah. Again, 99.9% .9 of the time, all those drops you're going to get are not the ones you want, and they're going to be shit. But they're at least actually that power level. But when you're doing those and you jump in and you've got like those level 100 characters that are there. Yeah, I have no, never yeah. seen so much broken build shit in my life. Like, these bosses get melted within seconds. It's like boss spawns, boss dead. And you're like, what the hell? Like, and this is supposed to be a game that gives everyone, like, viable builds when there quite clearly isn't viable builds. There are optimal builds to the game. Yeah. And everyone's just going to generally stick to them. And it kind of pisses me off that you can't just make the build you want because it's going to be shit into comparison of some weird broken build that can just run around one shot and everything. Yeah. And I you're know. sitting there like with your own planned out build with all of the upgrades and stuff that make that build better. And it's still complete shit next to something else. Yeah. 
and you're oh, struggling yeah. away and someone's just like one button mashing like through everything in like as though it's like made out of rice paper or something stupid yeah it's like um because i played a little bit with d twin and he uh had, and, it, and we're both saw sorcerers and he went for this he does this build guide uh following yeah. this website and he just kills everything with these lightning balls really fast and yeah I'm like, that's I... the thing yeah lightning balls <clears throat> everyone's using that 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 that's going to get nerfed to shit in the next update yeah so there I... always seems to be one class that gets like this big huge buff and then like they'll yeah change it because obviously it was broken yeah so i looked obviously that this website and i was just like i can't be asked with all this bullshit i just want to just do what i want to do and enjoy the game and i just feel so fucking underpowered compared to these build guides it's just a bit silly really I'm still enjoying the game, mm. though. To be fair, I, I still think it's fun. Oh, but... I, I still enjoy it, but yeah, it, it definitely has issues, and um, I still get really pissed off with. Uh, I can't do that right now. I don't have enough. I can't. I can't. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And as you know, the only moves in your arsenal worth a fuck are the ones that use mana. Yeah. And you'll go into a load of enemies and you'll obliterate them and you're like, yeah, this build's great. And then you'll have another enemy that's just talked bollocks, is going for fucking forever. And then you'll have some broken build just wobble past you and just, like, destroy everything in a second. And you just feel like going, why am I fucking bothering? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I know mean. It's demoralising. Yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Cool, mate. All right. Um... Only a few more games I want to talk about. Um, Remnant 2. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'll still need to get back on this at some point. Once I've finished with P, I'll get back on that. Yeah, so I so completed it with some randoms online and was, and really enjoyed it. I think I think it's a really good game, actually. Um, obviously, that came out this year. Uh, I think it were, it came out quite highly regarded at the time. And and I was actually going to buy it, but then it came on Game Pass, which was great. Um, the only thing that lets it down though is that it doesn't have crossplay, which is cross a little play, bit. Yeah. Annoying. However, if you have it on Game Pass, you can crossplay with on on Game Pass PC with Game Pass Xbox players. Because I tested it out, so I actually so I finished it, and then Peebs was playing it, obviously on his Xbox, so. I joined Peebs' game from my PC and um, I helped, helped him out for a couple of hours. I uh, helped him out some bosses because obviously I'm quite high, highly leveled now with with my character. Um, mm. You know, so I was pretty much just one shot on all the enemies for him, which was pretty funny. So, um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. I, I think it's a good game, man. Uh, <clears throat> it's really made for co op. So it's like, for those people that haven't played it, it's kind of like Dark Souls, but with guns and a little bit easier, I'd say. <clears throat> but some of the bosses are fucking hard, really hard. But um, it gets better later on in the game, I think, because obviously you start off with a class, but then when you level up quite high, you can have you can be two classes at once. So I'm like a sniper and and a medic, so I have both abilities, um, which is pretty cool. So, and then obviously the later on in the game you get you get better weapon, um, you get better weapon, and obviously you get your upgrades and shit like that. So it's a good co-op game. It's free player co-op, and um, it does make it a lot easier in co-op. I mean, yeah, that's the only way. And the only reason I finished the game was because um, I, I left my game open to the public, and I had and I had a couple of high level people join me, and we just kind of just rinsed the game, so that was quite good. So, yeah, really enjoyed Remnant too. Highly re recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> two more games I've played this week, and then and that'll be me done. Um, Ready or not on PC, so it's actually been open out on beta for over a year. 
Uh, I did get it in beta and really enjoyed it. The full game actually released about three or four weeks ago. Um, so I jumped on yesterday with Darkest Frost and um, basically it's fucking awesome. So if you remember, if you ever played the old SWAT games or the really old Rainbow Six games, that's kind of how the hell this is. It's really hardcore, very slow and methodical clear, clearing rooms in the missions. Um, you don't always have to shoot the enemies. You can shout at them to surrender and some of them drop their guns and you arrest them. But um, in beta, it only had the, the uh, only had multiplayer, but now it's got a single player campaign as well. So basically when you're in single player, you order your squad around. So you, you order them up to the door and then you tell them what to do so they can open it and flashbang or kick it down and just start shooting. You know, there's different tac tactics to do. Um, you have like ca cameras to look under doors. You mark, and you can mark up the enemies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very slow and methodical, really fun, really hard online um, because you've really got to communicate, um, and you get killed very easily. So, but it's a really good game, man. Really, really enjoying playing that. So, highly re re recommend it. So. Yep, that's all good. And then the last game I've been playing today, I did buy the kids a game for Christmas. Uh, and that is Bluey the Video Game. Ah. And it's really aimed at like four-year-olds. But you can play it four-player couch co-op. So each, each controller is a different character. So me, the missus, and both my kids were playing it this morning. And uh, had a bit of a blast on it. Really good for the Chivos. We've got 750 Chivos on it today. So that's good. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a short little... It's basically... The, it is the cartoon and graphics and stuff like that. But it's you basically explore and... It's like mini, ep it's like mini TV e episodes that you play out. And the kids love it, so and it, you know, and I was like, "Well, we're playing on my profile for the Chivos, and it's all good." So, there we go. Now, um, I do want to just uh, give a shout. Well, I don't want to give a shout, but I figured something out this past week, Darren, on Xbox. So, I've got a few people on my friends list. <clears throat> Daddy Ikin and another guy called JITFC, and they both have really high gamer scores, like 800,000 plus. And I was looking through their games played just out of interest, and there seems to be a little trend. There's these really shitty little games that you can buy for about four or five quid, and they give you like three or four thousand gamer score per game. What three or four thousand? Not even yeah. just like a, a standard. No, some some of them what are three is... or four thousand, and How they can, the can be completed in about twenty minutes. Like I'm pretty sure that all of the main companies that pro like that, that generally put games out are limited to to what they can have as a gamer score. Because wouldn't all of them be doing higher mm. gamer no, score? No. So basically, I know. think the way they get around it, I was doing a little bit of research online. So basically, you know, when a game comes out. It has the thousand G. Then, I, I still personally think that the little download of all games should be no more than four hundred gamer score, like they used to be back yeah. in the day. So basically, these games, these little games, they come. I think they come out at a thousand G, but then they have updates, which add extra levels, which add another thousand oh, gamer right. score. Yeah, that would kind of make sense. Yeah. yeah, you can add stuff from that. Yeah. So, um, but some of these games that these people have been getting, they, they've been getting them like four, like three or four thousand G per little game. So there seems to be like a little market for these shitty games they're selling for like a fiver, but they're just paying for gamer score. That's the, the that's not something like that's the kind of thing you just look at though and think, oh well, I'll scrub that. <laughs> it's just it's just bizarre i was just like because i've always wondered how have these people got such high gamer scores 
and now I know. Well, back in the day, some sad people used to play the same game of like three different, like the the American version, the European version, and the Asian version. Yeah. And they triple dip on all their achievements, which I still think is filthy cheating. You can still there. There are some older games where you can still double dip on the PC and console version. Yeah, I still think that's cheating. But that doesn't happen anymore because obviously with Play Anywhere, etc., it's the same set of achievements and the same game on PC and console. Now, so that's kind of died a death, I think. I mean, if it's the same game or a, and a remaster of that game or like an upgraded version of that game, I just think, think that's fine. Yeah. But if it's just kind of like the same game just played multiple times, it's just like, come on, mate. Yeah. Sake. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just wanted to just mention that, to be honest. So. um, Giving all your tricks of the trade. Well, I'm just letting people know because if people are wondering, (laughs) I'm just like, well, that's how they're fucking doing it. You know? Well, all you've got to do is look at these people's played games list. And you'd be like, oh, what the fuck is all these games, eh? So, Daddy Ikin, you're a filthy animal. It's, I suppose it's no worse than the old, uh, what was it, fucking Avatar or something? Oh, the, yeah. The famous Avatar game. And something yeah. else, wasn't it, that was like, get a thousand gamers score in like 10 minutes. I remember renting that from, from Boomerang when I had the <laughs> rentals with it. And it literally came in the post. I put it in my Xbox 360. Had the thousand G within ten minutes. Put it back in the envelope and put it straight straight back in the post box. Oh, speaking of games that I know you rented and really enjoyed from back in the day, have you yeah. heard they're doing a uh, HD remaster of El Shaddai for the Switch? Really? Yeah. Oh, I love that game, El Shaddai: Ascension of the Metatron. That's the one. Yeah, it was yeah. all kind of biblical, wasn't it? Oh, bloody brilliant that game. So, yeah, it's going to make a little bit of a comeback next year. Oh, fantastic. That's good to hear. Cool. Any other games you played, mate, or are you kind of done? Uh, on and off, I'm kind of done, though, to be honest. Um, a lot of my time has been kind of either drawn to Diablo and its disgusting, horrible, filthy, uh, like, limited time event that's ending soon. Yeah. Um, and lies to pay. That's fair enough. Um, a little there's... bit of Final Fantasy thrown in on top, etc. But yeah, I, did... I think I'm almost done with the full guys bullshit. I've got like uh. <laughs> a couple more rewards to AFK like over the next couple of mornings, and then I will never have to run that shit again. I, yeah. Although I did actually win one the other day. Oh, nice! Well done, mate. Um, yeah, it was only because uh, there was two of us in it. I think we started off with three of us, and then, like, in the second game, he, he fell off, even though it's usually me that cops that shit. So yeah. I had, like, a free reign of the final course. Yeah. I was half expecting to fuck that up and run out of time, typically, but <laughs> I managed it. Because there wasn't any stupid things like the uh, spinning hand above my head that screws up my directions, etc. Yeah. Cool. I did um, notice a couple of bits of news. Um, so those of you that are on PC... Oh, well, yeah, there's a one big bit of news, wasn't there? Uh, I might have missed that. But um, for those of you that are on PC um, and you like your mods, there is a mod coming out for Fallout 4 on the 23rd of April uh, called Fallout London. Now, this mod... Oh, finally got a date, yeah. yeah. I've seen the trailer a while back. Yeah, this has been in development for years, absolutely years, with uh, about 50 people. Um, it looks fantastic. Like It looks like its own game, to be fair. All set in London. Fallout 4 is the worst Fallout game. Yeah, but Fallout London, baby. So, um, obviously, this is only coming to PC because it's just a mod, but it looks like mm. something like uh, you would pay like for a full as a full DLC for. So um, it looks cool. It's a it's a full re- recreation of quite a few s- suburbs of London uh, and the sub uh, the tube. Um, 
And it looks it looks cool, man. So uh, there'll be something to look out for. So it's really, really cool that they've got a release date for that. So that's the 23rd of April. Um, check it out. It'll be free. <coughs> so, cool. Nice. And my last bit of news before Darren tells the big news that I don't have. Um, the Crew, the original Crew game... Uh, has now been removed from sale and it will become unplayable after the 1st of April. Always online games as a service, folks. Get yeah. them while you can. I'm a little bit sad I, I, about this because I enjoyed the first game, first crew game. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like... it. This is the thing that kind of annoys me, like, with these... these they're just throwaway. You've just got to now look at these games as they're just throwaway games made by the publisher. They can give a shit if people can play them or not. Yeah. They just want to make money. Yeah. But, it's, but you know, so it's not the first game. You might like, like it, like the way it plays, like the music in it, like all the different assets and all that kind of stuff. It's all completely gone and lost, like some yeah. shitty mobile game, just for a, a quick buck. Uh, and there's going to be so many more games that end up like this throughout the years because yep. people support this shite practice. Yep. Yeah, it, it does. It makes me sad, man. I mean, you know, as a big example that I have, Darren, uh, obviously we're both big fans of Test Drive Unlimited. Yeah. Um, I've tried to play Test Drive Unlimited 2 about, about a year ago and you can't play it anymore. Uh, you should still be able to load it up and play it, but offline you can't just do any of the casino stuff yeah. and things. I, you can't. I mean, I, I won't even launch on PC for me. So oh. yeah, I'm very sad because it's one of my favourite games of all time. So well, then the, the the classic thing would be is like the the developer that made it might be like, oh, but the new one's coming out. You can play that and be like, yeah, what if it's a steaming piece of shit? Yeah. Yeah, well, well, and some of the, well, and a lot of the times the developers don't exist anymore, do, do they? Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, what was your news, dude? Uh, you definitely heard about it. I probably forgot. Because there was a huge, basically, there was a a group of people. I'm not too sure who they were. Uh, some hacker group, basically threatened sony um for ransom over like some data they've managed to get hold of um and they basically obtained a hell of a lot of gameplay footage uh like financial deals and all this kind of stuff uh for various games uh and obviously leaked because the the ransom wasn't paid um, a load of stuff over uh, Wolver- the upcoming Wolverine game from Sucker Punch. That's right. Yes, yes. I don't know how I forgot to put this in, man. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah, yeah there is big news. You yeah. must have heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I even posted links to it in the bloody Discord. <laughs> it was before Christmas, though, so yeah. that'd probably be be why. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, this was uh, very big news, wasn't it? At the well, time? that Wolverine. Like, so I saw the video online, Darren. But also, there is a way to download that demo On and PC play it. And play it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I know this is horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, keep the cast. Maybe like maybe the, like the cast people. Because at the end of the day, it's not their fault. Like the people that have been obviously cast in all the different roles, etc. Yeah. Um, take a load of the story stuff that was leaked. Throw that shit in the bin where it belongs. Um, take a load of the character bios. Throw that shit in the bin where it fucking belongs. And start the whole fucking game again from the start. Yep. That's what I'd do. Because there's so much of that has been leaked, you might as well just start again. Yeah. Like, to be perfectly honest. And the game's still, like, two or three, like, about three years off anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, You you had the usual people online going, oh, this looks shit, like, visually and stuff. And it's like, do you not realise that you're basically 
looking at not much more than a sort of like wire mesh model that hasn't yeah. had the textures or finishing touches put over the top of it. Yeah. They're basically looking at a, a cake that has been pulled out of the oven and just covered in icing, and that's yeah. it. It hadn't had any of the stuff added to it or anything. I mean, it's horrible for all the people that were involved, and there does seem to be this huge trend of these hackers now doing all this kind of shit. I think I read about, just before Christmas again, that hackers basically tried getting into Ubisoft. Yeah. Um, but they managed to fight the attack off, even though Ubisoft, I'm pretty sure, have got nothing of value to really worry about being yeah. leaked, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, they managed to fight them off. But yeah, it's Sony's like security for the web stuff is horrendous. It is awful. It it's is... fucking horrid. <laughs> it was just quite interesting because some of the stuff in the leaks was really interesting. So, like, um, Ratchet and Clank lost millions and millions. It sold awful compared to how they thought it was going to sell. Well, uh, I think that uh, also might come down to the fact that um, it launched still at around the time when um, people were struggling to get hold of PS5s. Yeah. It was like that shortage wasn't there for the only yeah. early year. And as much as there is this huge thing of like, oh, platform games, I used to play them back in the day, etc., etc., it is kind of a struggling genre outside of indie games. Yeah. Um, because most kids nowadays want to, like, just play Fortnite or something mm. else. Yeah. Like, not, they're, yeah, they're not kind even. of not as interested in that kind of thing anymore. Yeah. What, what I found really fascinating, though, was how poorly their games are sold on Steam. Yeah, the PC versions. I told you it was pointless them putting the PlayStation games on PC. Well, what's really fascinating is games that are available on Game Pass sell, have sold way better on Steam than the PlayStation exclusive um, games, which is just boggles my mind. Like an example I saw was Grounded, which, by the way, is pretty crap. Um, sold better than Spider-Man and a few other PlayStation games on Steam. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting, really. I don't know if it's the fact that most PC gamers have got a PlayStation or what. I don't know. I think it's mainly that, yes. Yeah. And to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's kind of... Obviously, people are kind of pissed off that they uh, sort of decided to sort of like take their only available on this platform exclusive and all that lot and then just ship them over to another platform. Yeah. Uh, only for them to just sell generally way worse than they did on the platform that they were released on. Yeah. Just making it like kind of redundant and pointless. Yeah. I mean, some games have sold reasonably well, but you're still talking like uh, one third of the numbers that they'll do on the on the actual platform itself, etc. Yeah, it's, it's kind of bizarre. Yeah, and uh, even on PC, I did chuckle. Uh, the the Miles Morales Spider-Man game sold like shit in comparison to the first one. Oh, I wonder why? Oh, because it's not really a Spider-Man game. No. Well, it is a Spider-Man game, but it hasn't got Spider-Man in it, per yeah. se. Yeah. And I chuckled so hard that it didn't win anything in any of the game awards as well. Oh, what, Spider-Man 2? Well, yeah. it didn't deserve to win anything apart uh, from most disappointing fucking sequel of the year, maybe. Yeah. And if they had the Woke Awards, it would win loads. Yeah. <laughs> Buyer's Remorse Award. Lols. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was. It had quite a few bugs and stuff on it, didn't it, on launch and stuff? Yeah. Uh, from what I can recall. Yeah. Now, did you also see this bit of news from Sony as well? I don't know how true it is. Oh, is this about the deal? I was about to go into that. 
No, no. I was going to go and talk, talk, talk about game prices. I, I did see... I can't remember what might have been on Twitter or something. So take it with a pinch of salt. Um, I'll take it with like, not just a pinch, mate. You're on the whole pestle on more yeah. with it. Well. Um, they're looking... Sony are talking about making their exclusives between 80 and £100. Pounds. Why? Why? <laughs> Because I think they're worth well, it. This is the they? thing. Yeah, but th- this is the thing that's hilarious. Like, because I was having this conversation with my mate yesterday, <clears> when <throat> sort of like round round his house, and like he actually brought this up of like, oh, have you heard the rumor? I'm like, oh, that'd be good because every single sequel to one of their major franchises I have played in the last recent a bunch of years before they even decided to bump their games up for 70 quid has been a game that's been worse and yeah. inferior to the game that came before it. Yeah. Yeah, that God of War is an example. You want us to keep playing more. Yeah, yeah. God of War. Like yeah. Ragnarok was good, wasn't as good as God of War 2018. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, Horizon Forbidden West wasn't as good as Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Last of Us Part Two. The less said about that f- fucking piece of shit, the better. Um, Spider Man Two. We've just been moaning about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you could just like almost line them up. Yeah. So it's like Sony are now basically kind of doing what Microsoft were doing from transitioning to the 360 to the Xbox One. Yeah. Where they were putting out inferior sequels to beloved games. And yeah. It's, it, yeah, it is starting to, to, to kick into them as well. So I don't know what to say really to that. But, yeah, good luck. I still think that's a, a silly rumour. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know how true you'd it have is, to really. make something that yeah, you'd have to make something absolutely magical uh, to do that. Even though you're talking to someone who spent two hundred and fifty pound on games back yeah. in the day, yeah, like in the nineties and early two yeah. thousand. <laughs> yeah. But there's a slight difference in like owning an arcade game in your bedroom and. Uh, Owning a disappointing <laughs> sequel to a game that you once really lo- enjoyed. Nice. What, what was your bit of news? Um, yeah, oh, two seconds. I was about to say the other thing was I was talking about to oh, one sorry. of my mates. Yeah. Is, uh, I've, it's become that classic point again to me uh, where we were sort of in sort of like the middle of the 360 era where like this year is almost the perfect example per se where a lot of the games I've really enjoyed have been either new IPs or games I didn't think I was going to like and a lot of the games I was really looking forward to ended up being really disappointing yeah it's weird isn't it But yeah, the the piece of news I had was also something that was leaked from this apparent hack, which was to do with the fact that Sony have apparently paid Marvel um, X amount of millions to secure rights to certain Marvel franchises for games for the next decade. Well, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, So Marvel actually would have turned some sort of profit for once <laughs> i guess because uh, their their films and comics aren't haven't been doing particularly well of late have they? Oh, no um i wonder why that is uh so yeah that's uh pretty cool um not too sure obviously if there's a similar thing because obviously we've got the blade game coming out haven't we yeah that's right yeah uh, which, after seeing the footage from the Wolverine and seeing a lot of the leaks about it, I'm far more interested in whatever the Blade game was to whatever that Wolverine game is. And uh, I actually think, as a company, um, so, uh, that... Um, God, well, it's not Sucker Punch, is it? Sucker Punch are the ones that made um, Ghost of Tsushima. I'm waiting for them to unveil that disappointing sequel next. Oh, um, God. Insomniac, I think they're a developer that's fallen. They're no, they're just a shell of what they used to be, just like Naughty Dog. Mm-hmm. 
So we shall see. But yeah, they, yeah, there was other leaks and stuff that was there. Um, unfortunately, I think some of the forthcoming stuff was also leaked from some of Sony's first-party games divisions. Okay. Um, and obviously myself and a few people I know have all been basically saying, like, oh, Blue Point, Blue Point, yeah. Get them to do the Bloodborne remaster. They'd be stupid to not do a Bloodborne remaster. It's like the most talked about game on the internet. Bloodborne's like one of the most beloved games. It's sold so many PS4s, and the only thing that people moan about it is is its dodgy performance because it was yeah. on like base PS4, etc. Yeah. Uh, and if they did a remaster, it would clean up. Then they could stick it on the PC as well, and it would probably clean up a lot more on there. Yeah. Um, than some of their other games that they've transitioned, considering that's probably one of the most requested games. Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't look like Blue Point are working on a Blue Point remaster. <laughs> They're working on some other new IP or something. I swear to God, in this modern era, so many companies are just kind of like afraid of making money. That's what it seems to me, just afraid of making money. You've got money-making ideas right there, and they just do the fucking complete opposite. <clears throat> yeah. Like, how can we push our customers away? How can we make something that people don't want? Oh, they're all over there saying they want this. Oh, we won't make that. We'll do something else. I mean, Konami have turned the corner, maybe. Like, people have said for ages they wanted, like, remastered Metal Gear games, and they're finally on that boat. Yeah, finally, yeah. And then these companies generally put out sort of games or go back to the kind of games that made them popular back in the day and they're shocked why they, they were so, so, so successful. Mm, yeah. Because I think one of the first ones was, uh, was in it, uh, Square Enix, when they put out Bravely Default and they were like, oh, we didn't realise a turn-based RPG. Yes. Actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking hell. It's nuts, isn't it? Oh, you mean the games that you used to be known for, like, like absolutely, like as one of the best companies for this type of genre of game. Oh, I oh, know, mate. It's crazy. I'm just, um, I don't know. Like Sony have just gone since they've moved away from Japan to California. They've just really gone down, you know. Oh, massively, like horrendously. Um, it's it, Nothing will obviously beat e Xbox's Seppuku. Uh, that was like absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, but basically PlayStation have done their damned hardest to basically try and follow that up. Yeah. Like, let's get rid of all the stuff that truly made us stand out. Let's, let's throw all of our legacy stuff in the fucking trash. Oh, I know. Let's come out of all this <clears throat> stupid shite. Like, the, the fact that even still with the... Like, I will say, the Xbox dashboard, as horrendous as it is, it has actually improved since the days of the Xbox One. Yeah. Definitely. PS5 dashboard is worse than the PS4s. Like, it just fucking blatantly is. It always has been. Uh, and people have wanted changes to that for, for, for ages. And again, it's just like, nah, nah, nah. We won't listen to anyone. Yeah. We won't do that. We could make money by selling like animated themes and all that kind of stuff. Nah, 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 nah. We won't do that. Let's also bump the price of PS Plus up and all this kind of shite as well. Like It, it will soon come to the point of this is enough. And this is the point in like the history of gaming where... As a console manufacturer, you've got to try and keep your player base interested in actually having consoles, or you're going to push everyone else over to PC. Because yeah. it's like, if everything's generally going to end up on PC anyway, uh, or whatnot, um, stick them on a platform where you've got people that can mod and fix the games properly. Uh, you pay less for the games because you won't be paying 70-odd quid, although they have started trying that bullshit, haven't they, with PC? Aren't some games on PC, like, 70 quid or something? Yeah, but then you can usually just find it cheaper on, like, um, like on CD keys or something like that, you know? Usually. Uh, but, yeah, prices have definitely gone up a bit. 
and yet like half these companies come out of all these weird and wonderful ideas that are generally going to put people off not bring people in i mean let's be real i think xbox nintendo and sony all together do really well off of the the normie we shall say yeah like you're just general everyday man with a family and stuff doesn't really look into gaming too much just like likes and hears about the latest trends and bits and bobs and the they seem to get a lot of their their customers and that from them. Yeah. But at the same time, like the the gaming audience is a passionate one. It's just it hugely is. Every time a Nintendo game comes out or whatever, you see it. Yeah. Like this big community come around the game. We saw it with Elden Ring. That game didn't really need any advertising at all because everyone who played it uh, and was a fan of it advertised that game for the company anyway. Yeah. And then you've just got these companies walking around, stabbing themselves in the legs, screaming and going, what the fuck's going on? So I don't know, mate, stop stabbing yourself in the leg. Well, they've, they've cut the lesion of Jim Ryan out of PlayStation now, haven't they? He's yeah, gone. Yeah, but who's, but who's replaced um, him? That's, that's, that's the thing. Isn't, hasn't Mark Cerny maybe moved up a little bit or whatnot? I don't, I don't know. know. But, yeah, I can... See, we always say this, like, they'll, they'll go on a slow decline and, and all this lot, but they still seem to be selling shitload of units and all this well, stuff. the consoles are, set, are like, re- really outselling the Xbox massively. Wasn't it, like, three to one or something? Something like that, yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess, like, imagine how much, it, how much better it would be selling if they had some competent people in charge that actually knew what they were fucking doing. Yeah. I mean, that's easy for us to say as sitting there, but we, we've known of other people in charge when companies haven't been making all these stupid decisions and driving people away from their product. Yeah. Or having, like, weird hacks and other things like that going on that sort of, like, leak all their details out there. Obviously, at least nothing as horrendous as um, the epic... PlayStation Network crash or whatever it was. Oh, in God, yeah, I remember that. that. <coughs> yeah. Oh, good times. I think we've moaned it enough, was, though, Darren, to be honest. Yeah, no, <laughs> um, yeah I think... I think we're going to call it the end of the episode there, mate, to be honest. Um, That's fine. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. And I can't wait to do the Game of the Year show. If you haven't put your top five in, put them into the Discord because I will read them out and do a collated version as well. So we get the community's top five. Uh, but we all know the only top five that matters is mine. <laughs> so, but uh, now on a serious note, that'd be really interesting to see because 2023 has been a pretty mega year for games i'd say there's been a lot of quality games out so be very interesting to see and i noticed darren you picked up like a dragon so i'm looking forward to hearing you talk about that in the near future as well at some point although like the the start of next year is actually kind of insane yeah it uh, is when it comes to like games coming out I still am in the for, like the, the the belief that next year I think is going to be even better than this year for games. Wow, that's going to be some going. I and mean, we've got Final Fantasy VII remake in February. That's just going to be my big game. I think uh, I'm hoping Grand Blue Fantasy is even better than that. Wow, that's out in February as well, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much around the same sort of time. Yeah. Raise air. So I was I was going through a list the other day when I was around my mates, and he, he he's kind of like a little bit bit more focused on what he likes. He doesn't like a wide 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 variety of games. He's kind of more focused into certain types of games. Yeah. That's fair enough. Um, cool. Well, I'm looking forward yeah. to next year's games. 
Oh, yes. Awesome. Right, I'm going to end it here. It's been awesome. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, Darren. It's been cool to catch up. Really, really interesting. No and uh, we'll be back for the Game of the Year show hopefully next week. So for me and Darren, it's been emotional. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.